So today, I'm gonna show you some fruit forward recipes. We're making candy! And we're gonna visit Booch Kombucha to learn more about this delicious and gut-friendly drink. Look at you, flavoring your first thousand liter batch of kombucha. I mean, I do this at home, but not on this scale. But first, I'm gonna show you how to make something that you can put delicious fruit on top of. Hey, just sneaking in here for a second to say that I hope you enjoy this compilation video we have from our Bell 5 series that we did a little while back. If our visit to Booch Kombucha gets you excited about the idea of kombucha and maybe you want to brew your own, I got a video here on the channel that'll help you with that. I'll post it in the link down below. But you can also search for it on your own. Before we get into the video, I'd love to give some shout outs to some of the audience who's shown us some love in the comments down below. Diane from Ohio, Susan from Long Beach, Joe from Uckland, New Zealand, Anne from Chicago, Karen from Orkney Island off the north coast of Scotland, and Candace from Hessen, which is just outside of Kitchener, Ontario, which is actually where we shot this video. If you want to shout out, all you have to do is say hello to us in the comments down below. Let us know what you thought of the video and where it is in the world that you're watching from. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this and other things that we do here in the channel. All right, back to the video. Most mornings my breakfast is some kind of oats with fruit nuts and seeds, and some dried fruit. But it gets a little boring just to do oatmeal or to do granola every day, so I like to mix it up with something that I like to call an oat bake. Basically what we're gonna be doing is blending up the oats with other things and baking it inside of an air fryer, but you can also do it in a convection oven if that's what you've got. I do all of this inside of my little hand blender, but you can use a regular blender as well. So I pre-measured out a half a cup of plant milk. I've got unsweetened almond milk here. And we're just gonna dump everything else inside of this. So I have a half a cup of oats, some flaxseed, and some cinnamon. Most days I'll actually put some protein powder in at this point if I'm doing this for a post-workout meal, but I'm not adding it today. I'm gonna put a little bit of maple syrup in here. And then last but not least, we're gonna put in a really ripe banana. Just break it up into a couple pieces, put it in there on the top and just mash it down. This is probably more than the manufacturer would tell you to put in here, but it works just fine for me. Get in there. And then we're just gonna blend it up. So I like to let it sit for about a minute or two after because the flaxseed in there is what's gonna work like an egg and it's gonna thicken it up. So just let that sit there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding some of our fruit to the bowl. This is an oven safe bowl. So I'm gonna put in most of the fruit inside here. I wanna leave a little bit for the top to make it pretty. You can use whatever you want. Here I've just got some apples and some blueberries, but any fruit that you've got fresh or frozen works here. Some of our dried fruit and seeds here. I've just got a mix of raisins and chopped up pecans. And so that's just all at the bottom of the bowl. And now what we're gonna do is give this one more little quick blend. This is not a technical thing. I just do that to get most of it off. So now we're gonna pour this inside this bowl and just stir it all around until it's nice and combined. This is a little thinner than it usually looks, but we're gonna give it a whirl and see what happens. It should thicken up inside the oven. So we're just gonna to top it with some more of those seeds and dried fruit, as well as the rest of our fruit. And then for the health of it, I like to just sprinkle some hemp seeds on top. So this has been baking for 20 minutes inside the air fryer, and I let it sit and cool for just a little bit because otherwise it's a bit too hot to eat. What I love about this is I can put it inside there, set it to cook, and then go for a walk, do a workout, have a shower, whatever it is, and by the time I'm done, it's ready to go. Part of the fun of this is digging in and seeing what it looks like when you first crack that delicious skin on top. It's still steaming. It's probably gonna burn my mouth. Let's find out. Oh my goodness. It's so good. It's got all of the deliciousness and joy of oatmeal, but it's also got kind of like a cake mixture with these blended oats. I have this at least once a week and it's pure delicious. And I don't care that it's burning my mouth because I'm hungry and it's so good. Yeah, that's hot, that's hot, all right. Today, I'm gonna to visit Booch Kombucha just outside of London, Ontario. Booch is run by owner and master fermenter, Shannon Kamins, who discovered kombucha when she started having health issues. 
About eight years ago, I was diagnosed with celiac disease, and I really was worried about what I was putting in my gut because I was bloated all the time. So I started reading this book called The Art of Fermentation, and that's kind of where I learned that uh, fermented foods are really great for your gut. Um, they help you digest your food and absorb it. And so I immediately wanted to start brewing my own kombucha. I fell in love with it right away. And then I thought, I can make this. What started off as Shannon selling at local farmer's markets turned into a business that ships throughout Ontario and British Columbia. The original flavors um, that I started making on my countertop are still the flavors that we produce today. So raspberry lemonade, ginger, those were our like my favorite flavors to make, and they've turned out to be like our top sellers. And then otherwise, I'm just kind of inspired by ingredients or their health benefits or what's seasonally available. So we do a seasonal brew twice a year, and it just it depends what's in season. And so we'll work with local farmers that are growing those ingredients, and that kind of inspires us to introduce a new flavor. And today, I'm gonna brew with her. So this is our brew room. So right now we're going to be weighing out the black tea that we use in our kombucha. So you make like the world's biggest tea bag? Mm -hmm. Yeah. About 1,200 for each bag. So that's brewing now. How long does that brew for? So we let it steep for about 45 minutes. And then what happens after that? And then we add our organic cane sugar. While we waited for the tea to steep, Shannon took me to the SCOBY room. So for people that don't know, what's SCOBY? So SCOBY is the symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. Because it's full of bacteria and yeast, it helps digest the sugar um, as well as the caffeine. So in that process, it's digesting it and creating B vitamins and organic acids, and that's pretty much what makes kombucha so good for you. How many different SCOBYs do you have on site? So we probably have about 400 SCOBYs. I have one, <laughs> and I keep it alive. His name is Walter. Walter! We also name our SCOBYs too. We have uh, someone that does energy work that comes to the brewery, and her idea was to name the SCOBY after kind of like the essence that it brings into the world. So what is your biggest SCOBY? Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, like this is what a healthy SCOBY looks like. Big trampoline. Look at the thickness. Keepers. So this. Oh my God. This is brewed many times. Every time you make a new batch, another layer forms. Oh. <laughs> wow. Like. Mm. Oh, oh no! It broke. <laughs> it's okay. I heard it. <laughs> uh, it'll 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 repair itself. It'll repair. Cause this is living. So. They are. They are. They're living, and they like to drink tea and sugar. Exactly. That's their favorite beverage. <laughs> And now that the tea is steeped, it's time to add the sugar. <laughs> Getting my workout this week. Just pour it. Gently. Gently. Oh my goodness. It's miss. Ah, that's better. I got a better grip now, I think. Oh. We're like, we're really proud of the sugar that we use um, because it's not only certified organic, but it's like biodynamic and eco socials. The world's largest cup of tea. So after this is done brewing in here and all the sugar's dissolved, where does it yeah. go? So then it goes through the hose and into one of those tanks. And how long does it sit for? Usually it takes about two to three weeks to ferment. And then we get to flavor. Ah, so we're going to do flavoring next. Yeah. I'm very excited about this. What are we making today? What's the flavor? Blueberry holly basil. It smells, oh, there it is. I was like, yeah. I don't smell it. Oof, it and it kind of has like blueberry and watermelon and like vanilla spice tones, I find. I'm going to taste it. You should taste one too. Cheers. <laughs> It's a little spicy. It's got a little spice to it, but it doesn't, I thought it was gonna like be really, really pungent. Mm -hmm. it, there's a mellowness to it, but it's, it, it's a sweetness too. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's mm. kind of like juicy fruit. Like there's the fruity notes. Oh yeah, now I see it. So what has to happen now? And now we're gonna put it in strainers, as well as uh, we juice some organic blueberries. So we're adding that juice in, and then we're also adding the fiber of the blueberries. Yeah. This is kind of like a trade secret, but it makes our kombucha have a lot more flavor. And you're the only company that does this. Yep, a lot of other companies just add extracts. Boring. I know, it's not as your, fun. Gotta get your hands dirty. <laughs> All right, so that's it for the blueberries. Now what do we do? So now we're going to pour the uh, blueberry juice in and then add the strainers afterwards. That's so much fun! <laughs> Look at you flavoring your first thousand liter batch of kombucha. I mean, I do this at home, but not on this scale. <laughs> Next time I have 2,000 friends that are coming over and need some kombucha, <laughs> this is how I'll make it. Yeah, this is your proof. Can we try some? Yeah. Let's try it. Thanks, I can. You can I love that you can hear the fizz. Mmm. 
Oh, the basil takes a second, but when it kicks mm -hmm. in, it's really lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty gentle. Yeah, it's simple. It's not overpowering. I love that you can still taste like the base kombucha flavor, mm -hmm. but that you have these other notes in there. You can see how many uh, it takes until you have a kombucha burp. Oh my goodness, I like this game. <laughs> I could stay here and drink Shannon's booch all day long. Yeah, you're just doing it shot style. <laughs> but it's time to go back to the farm to show you what else you can do with kombucha besides drinking it. Do you have a fridge full of kombucha and you want to experiment with it a little bit? Let's make a salad dressing. This salad dressing will follow my usual formula where I use an acid, a sweet, a salt, and a fat. So what we're using here for the acid is our kombucha. I've got about a half a cup in there. My fat component is gonna be a non-dairy yogurt. This is just unsweetened coconut. And I've got about a third of a cup in there. For the salt, we're adding some tamari. This is one tablespoon. You could also use soy sauce for this. For the sweet component, I'm using maple syrup. And then for a little flavor enhancer, I'm just gonna add a little bit of minced ginger. And by a little bit, I mean a big chunk because ginger is awesome. And then we're gonna mix that up. If you've got a little hand mixer, that would work really well too. I kinda wish I'd use that because I'm running out of space here. But that's okay, this is gonna be great. And depending how thick you like your dressing, you could add more yogurt or less. It's really a personal taste here, but I wanted something that's similar to like a light vinaigrette. The fat component is gonna help it stick to the vegetables so that it's just not dripping off and all pooling at the bottom. Oh, that's really, really nice. The, it's got this little fizzle and sparkle from the kombucha, but the fattiness from the coconut yogurt just hits me in the right spot, and then the ginger comes in at the end. I literally just made this up by thinking. I've never tried this before, and it's pretty delicious. So what I'm gonna do is just pour this over this quick garden salad that I made. The beautiful thing about salad dressing is if you make a big batch of it, it'll last in the fridge for at least a week. You just gotta give it a quick stir before you use it again. It's so good. That's delicious. I really love that. It, it tastes light, but it also has this full fatty filling to it. And that kombucha and that ginger are dancing together beautifully. So remember the four elements for the salad dressing. Acid, salt, fat, sweet. Use any combination inside of those categories you want to create unlimited kinds of dressing. Use those four components in there and you will have a dynamite dressing every single time. One thing you often miss out on when you go plant-based are things like gummies, because they're made with gelatin, which is not a vegan product. It's horse bones. What we use instead is agar agar powder, which is dehydrated and dried seaweed. It's ground up into a dried form. There's a big difference between agar powder and agar flakes. They both do the same thing, but they have a different consistency and a different potency, so make sure if you're using this recipe, you use agar powder. This is actually a bit of an experiment for me. I've made gummies before, but never this way, because another thing I'm gonna try today is using kombucha. So in addition to being a delicious treat, these are also gonna be really good for your gut because they're filled with probiotics. We're gonna start by taking two and three quarters a cup of fresh fruit, I'm using strawberries, and we're gonna blend that up. If you want a thicker gummy, you could probably just use this as is, but I want it to be a little clearer like the ones you find in the store. So I'm going to strain this liquid and only get the juice out. So as you can see, that liquid's doing a lot of its own work there, but we're just gonna take the spatula and just kind of push it down and help it out. Just to help puree out all of that extra liquid. As you can see, most of it is coming out because fruit is largely water-based. All this is gonna do is make it a little less chunky. So now I'm gonna add three tablespoons of maple syrup, and then we're gonna simmer this on the stove for about eight to 10 minutes until it starts to bubble. Whisk it constantly to keep it from burning. Then we're gonna add in a cup of kombucha. And then I'm gonna mix together two tablespoons of water with two and a half tablespoons of agar agar powder just to form a paste. We're gonna turn that on liquid, Pour this into a little simmer and just let it go for four to five minutes. And then we're gonna take it off the heat. 
You want to make sure you're stirring this the whole time and then let it cool for a few minutes. So once that's been sitting for a few minutes on the stove, you can grab a dropper and start filling up your gummies. Gummies like this will probably set in about 30 minutes to an hour inside the fridge. But just adjust yours based on the size of your shapes. We're making candy! These turned out even better than I thought they would. These are adorable. You can make these any shape you want based on whatever molds you have. Oh, yeah. Those are so much better than I thought they would be. They've got that beautiful fruitiness from the, oh, the strawberry's just kicking in. Wow. The first thing I tasted was the vinegariness from the kombucha, but then that strawberry just came in right at the end and kicked me. That is a fantastic treat and snack. I'm so happy with how these turned out. Make them whatever shape you want and make your own plant-based kombucha gummies. Thanks for joining us for this fruit forward recipe bonanza. If you enjoyed the video, please let us know in the comments down below. Otherwise, hit that like button for more videos like this and subscribe to not miss another one of our upcoming videos. Speaking of which, YouTube really wants you to check this one out next. This one out next, I'm sorry, I will articulate my words better in the future. Bye.